There's something Scottish. So I'm going to be cooking something Scottish. Cue some Scottish music, apparently. Allegedly. Right, we're going to make... <clears throat> I'm going to make beef olives. With a slight difference. With some... Haggai. I'm going to stuff my Haggai instead of... Uh, Mealy Jimmy. Because I wanted to make my own Mealy Jimmies. But I couldn't find any gluten free oatmeal in the shop. Uh, so I've got a gluten free Haggai and it'll be much the same. This was requested by Greg Anderson. So, what you need is some Haggai peeled, shaved, skinned, gutted. And in a bowl, you'll need four slices of top side. Now I've got them fairly thick, fair butcher. I've got a few layers of cling film down, and a few layers here, and I'll explain this in a minute. So, first thing you need to do is flatten it out. So, if you've got a meat mallet, great. If you don't, cider cleaver or a heavy pan. So you, you flatten this out. I dare say you can come back, because I'm sure none of you want to stand and watch me beat my meat. Right, you're getting 30 of these for being a naughty boy. What the fuck? Aya! Aya! My meat doesn't need tendered. Thank you. Mm. Right. So once your, your meat is beaten, If you cut your hog eye into four slices, put that to one side. Right, I'm going to do a wee bit of a difference. I'm going to put some bacon in the middle of this. Right, so you get your haggis. Oh, I could have, if I'd had a meat mallet, I would have uh, made this thinner, but it's, it's okay. So you, you tuck in the edges. These are just going to be big bastard beef olives. Right, like that, put to one side. So do the same again. Oh. Just using up the last of this bacon, so bacon in the middle. Your haggis. Now we would say you could use uh, vegetarian haggis, <clears throat> but one, that would be utterly pointless, and two, if it's vegetarian, it's not a haggis. Although it is bloody tasty, it's just not a haggis. So you tuck the edges in like that. Okay. These are big bloody beef olives, but I like that. I'll do the other two and come back. Right. Once you've got your beef olives made, you've got to tie them. So you need some good tying string, preferably cotton. Uh, you'll get them from butcher as well if they're open. Right. So this is how you tie. It's been a while since I've done this. So get it done lengthwise. So keep your finger over the end. So take your your un your unconnected end around your finger. Pull your finger through. I make. Yep, see, I made a cunt of that. Hey. Try Are this again. Are you trying to do it like a parcel? No, no, no. Mm. Jesus Christ, see, I'm out of practice. I can't see this bubble.
Hey, right, we'll come back once I've worked out how to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out. I was being a thick. Right, so the untied end is nearest you. Take the bit that's connected to your string towards you. Take your tied end over your finger, creating a loop. You then put it over the other piece of string, tie it through, and you get a slip knot. Who, by the way, are an absolutely terrible ensemble. And then to make sure that doesn't slip any further, you put in another couple of knots in. Right, and then so we can swing. Right. So I'm going to put in a couple just so that it doesn't burst. So here we go. And this is literally how you would tie a, a butcher's joint. Butchers might use uh, the elasticated stuff or nets or whatever. But. So I'm going to get them tied up and come back. Right, so we made the olives. We don't have a casserole dish, so I've frozen the other two. Ideally, you would make these the day before and stick them in the fridge. All right, I mean, you could buy beef olives, of course. And I just had a wee epiphany. If you wanted to, you could either, when you're wrapping your haggis, you could put some cheese in the middle, or even stick a neep. Make a deal. All right, so in a, in a hood and head pan, you want to melt some beef dripping. And you could do veggie oil or whatever oil, not olive or, or rapeseed oil, you know, none of these virgin oils that are kind of primarily for flavour or fruit oils, not oils and stuff. Good thing with beef dripping is it's got a really high smoke point. But now it's important you don't season this meat yet. I'm going to take this off. And I'm just going to brown all, all sides, pretty straightforward, so you don't need to watch that. So I'll brown them, and I'll just put it back in this plate, because there's a, a couple of other things to do, but I'll come back. Right, once you brown your olives, put them to one side. Now, I've cut two onions in half, left the stock in. And this is for the gravy, but also kind of gives you a, a, a wee veggie accompaniment. And one carrot cut lengthways in half, and then in half again, just at an angle. Uh, again, this will flavour the gravy, but it gives you a wee accompaniment to what you're going to be eating. Stick them on there. Now is the time to add salt and pepper. Don't need to add any more fat. Because we use beef dripping, it will make a big difference to the flavour. Now you want to get these a nice colour. Give them a wee shake so they don't burn. Something like that. A little bit of charring on them. <coughs> Probably keep choking on the pepper. So the haggis I had left, I'll explain it to you in a second. Once I get a bit of colour on these veggies, I'll put more salt on the bottom side of them. Won't put any more pepper. Now, good old friend Bisto, kettle of boiling water. If you had red wine, we did have red wine, but, <coughs> but um, we didn't get shopping today. So, instead, we used our time to exercise. Now, pour the water into the pan.
That's kind of how hot you need the plant to be. Cooling. Now, the reason I kept the haggis is because the oatmeal in it will help thicken the gravy. Should also mention I've got the oven. Oh my god! I've got the oven preheated to 160. You don't want it too hot. Right, so mash that up. Bring it to a boil. Wipe up your mess as you go along, David McIntosh. Add good old, good old bisto. So you make your gravy first. I mean, you can just put them in the water and then take them all out and then thicken your gravy afterwards. But that's a bit like being a being a Boris with the COVID nineteen virus and the closing the, the gate once the horses are bolted. Okay. Oh, but it's doing a good job. Aye, if he was doing a good job, he would have put us in lockdown fucking weeks ago. Jeremy Corbyn wouldn't have done a better job. Well, maybe he wouldn't have. Maybe he would. You'll never know. It's too fucking late to find out. Right, so. I want to taste this. Well, it doesn't taste like shit, so that's good. We're going to take it off the heat. Actually, I'm going to sharpen it up with a bit of old uh, Tommy K. But that one's not open, so. Yeah, basically, I'm going to put a wee sup tomato ketchup in it. Give it a wee stir. Put the beef olives, the onions, and the carrots back in there, and then I'll come back. Okay. Just get your carrots and onions in there. And I don't even have tin foil, which is annoying, but we're going to use some. <coughs> Excuse me, it's pepper, not coronavirus. I'm going to use some parchment and some string to tie it, but I'm going to tidy up before I do that, so we'll come back. Oh. Right, allow that to cool down just so I can touch the sides. So, I'm going to make a cartouche. So, fold it in half, fold it in half. So, you've got central points here. Fold it in half, fold it in half. You just, I mean, you can keep folding this as many times as you like. You really want it to be fussy. It doesn't matter. So you want this to be bigger than the pan. So roughly the size of the parchment. Right. And also, just to make a wee air vent, if you take the very tip. So you get a tiny little hole in it. Like Scrunch it all up because it just makes it easier to, to be pliable. Open the food. Place it around the side of your pan. Get your string, tie it on, tie it up. Bring it back up to the heat, stick it in that preheated oven. Probably about two hours. The bigger ones maybe slightly longer, but simple as that. Right, so when your olives are almost ready, roughly 20 minutes, half an hour before they're ready, uh, 
dice up some tatties into chunks. I've got a wee pinch of thyme in there and I'm going to stick a bay leaf in. I'm going to put another wee pinch. And uh, in here I have got celeriac, which looks a wee bit like a neep. You peel it and cut it just like a neep. Uh, I've put that in acidulated water. For people who don't know what that is, that's water with a squeeze of lemon in it. And it's, it just stops it going there. Uh, stops it going dark. Now if you were just doing plain celeriac mash, if memory serves, you cook it in a bit of milk and cream. But it's been that long since I've done it. But I'm doing tatty and celeriac mash. So basically you just boil it like you would boil tatties for mash. And we'll come back once that's done. Right. That isn't salad I can buy up and taking that out of the oven. I'll turn this down. Just there. Uh... So I'm putting that in there for a reason. Reason being. I have got a tatty ricer. So somebody's buggered this, but I. Oh, it's not quite my tatty ricer. Anyway, remove the bay leaf. Keep the pan on the heat. I just. Uh, if you've got a tatty masher, use a tatty masher. If you've got a tatty ricer, use a tatty ricer. No, it's going to hit me a tatty masher because somebody's buggered my ricer. Oh well, we'll come back once I've chopped it in. Yeah. Over. Sorry, right. just double click. Find it. Okay. Yeah. Three, two.
that. Just like most of my stuff. Right. You ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Kate thinks she didn't film the last bit, so here you go. That's it, plated up. I'm sure you can out of this shit up. Well, Chef, what do you think? I know I'm biased because I cooked it. Fuck, that was good. I'll be honest, the beef was too thick. I asked for it too thick because I was planning on buttering it thinner. However, didn't have my meat mallet. And I wasn't standing there beating my meat in front of everyone. So, I could categorically say that it's so much more worth it making your own. It really is. What did you think? What, be seeing you? Alright, okay. Alright, it was bloody fine. And another example that, that was one slice of meat, a little bit of haggis, some onion, carrot, water, tartar, celeriac. You can just do plain tatty. Really, you can cook nutritious meals for next to fuck all. And it's easy. A little bit of time needs to be taken. Greg Anderson, that was for you, pal. Crappy, crappy cooking.